Okay, the purpose of this video is to plow through creating the drawing sheets of the puzzle cube that I used as the YouTube example. Um, I have another video that really explains um, the rationale behind choosing front views and thinking about how and why we're placing our dimensions where we're placing them, and that's not going to be my purpose of this video. This video is going to plow through, but allowing students to see kind of where I clicked, etc. Um, but I'm going to do it more at the rate at which I can. Um, and this is for students who are struggling to complete this project that I am assigning them to do the one that I've done in the video. So I'm going to go ahead and make all five drawing sheets as well, where the other video just shows the creation of one, but gives a lot of explanation. So let me begin. I'm going to start a new drawing tab. I'm going to go to my on shape to make sure that I can find the template that I uploaded to my account, our Edgewood account. That way I get the nice title block. I like to use my part studio potentially to kind of know what view is what in terms of front, top, right, um, back, etc. as I'm picking my front views. So you may see me clicking back over here to just kind of understand I'm looking at the view cube to just kind of know what face. Like the purple, the face I really want to show is pointing down. I know there's another block on the other side of you going down. And so it's really going to be the bottom that I choose. So I want the front of the blue, the bottom of the purple, and I'll kind of, I'll start with there. Oh. All right, so I'm going to insert, I'll go blue first. Click. Um, that's not bad, but if I want to rotate, I do have to rotate before I project views. So I'm going to flip that one around 180 degrees. Remember, these drawing sheets do not have to be, the parts do not have to be in the orientation they are on the puzzle. The purpose of the drawing sheet is to allow a factory a manufacturer to understand the part, to give them all the information needed to produce the part. And so I'm trying to choose the best views the best orientations for my kind of standard front top right. And so I do not have to, like I said, do not have to have it in the orientation it's going to come in. Um, oh, I chose the wrong thing. I'm trying to hide it. Uh, sorry, shade it. And I do not want the hidden lines in the isometric. Okay, dimensioning. There's my overall width. There's my overall height. And here's my overall depth. I need to give two smaller widths. And I'm going to change for all drawings here the precision, the number of decimal places I show from three to two. And I'm going to, oh, I've already done the text height and the arrowhead to 10 point font instead of the default, which is bigger. All right. Within the overall height, I need to give this dimension. Now, not everything is the same from here to here, so I do need to understand where this is located. So I need to dimension that location, and I'm going to go from here to here. That actually is kind of a nice little example of what's called baseline or datum dimensioning, kind of locating all the features from a common end line. So my heights you could call um, baseline dimension, but that blue part is done. When you add another sheet, I would rename the sheet you just created. So it's going to be blue multi-view. And we are going to not add a tab, we are going to add a sheet. And I think I already knew how I wanted the purple, so I'm going to do the purple next. I knew I wanted the bottom as my front view. So I don't care what this calls it, but for the sake of my multi-view drawing, I call this the best front view. And it came in the orientation that I want, so I don't have to rotate, so I'm off to projecting. Remember, you need to... Go to View Properties and Rotate first before you would project your other views. Once you start projecting other views, if you go into the menu to try to rotate it, it will be grayed out and will not let you. Um, all right, overall width. I'm putting the, basically if I have three dimensions, kind of three smaller sections. I give all but one, so two of the three, and I put them on the contours. Um, the overall height I'm going to do in this view because 
I've got this contour sticking out, and I need to do one of those two. Overall depth, I could do here or here, but since I've got the heights there, maybe I'll go ahead and just put the depths here. There's no rule that says I have to have all of my, you know, dimensions and that each view has to have some dimensions, but I'll do that. Last thing I do is kind of clean up spacing, etc. Make sure that I like where everything's at on paper so that it looks neat and organized. So that's it. Purple is done. Rename purple multi view. Let's add another sheet. Insert another part. And we'll go orange. Orange is pretty easy. I think there's only the four blocks. So I think it's flat. Um, let's see how's top. I want to see the four blocks. Yep. I'm going to flip that though so the T is going the other direction. So I'm going to turn off the project tool by hitting escape. I'm going to go to view properties. Like I said, we're going to rotate 180 degrees. I'm going to do that before I project because I won't be able to project after I, or rotate after I project. So here we go. We've got front, top, right, and isometric. Right click, show hide, show shaded, and onto my dimensions. There is my overall width. I'm definitely going to add that little width because that one sticks out, and then I need another one. I don't want to click here because my extension line will go all the way down to there, and it kind of covers that corner. So I'm going to choose from here to here or to here, and I can get that smaller dimension either way. Okay. So there is my widths. I'm going to do my heights in this view, the front, because on this, this right side of the front view, I can see contour better than I can see it here. So that's a nicer place. We always like to put the dimensions on the contours. And then the depth doesn't really matter if I put it on the right or the top, one or the other, not both. That's it. Rename, that is the orange multi-view. Often students just put too many dimensions. All right, add another sheet, insert, insert. Let's grab the green. Um, I think I kind of like, uh, might rotate the way that was facing. Sometimes what I do is I really want to like even think about the isometric, which is easier to do um, in the part studio. If I hide all the other ones and kind of consider, like, if I do that, then I can rotate and be like, what's the isometric going to look like from there? You know, just kind of whatever I think's front, like, rotate the what's right of it a little bit and rotate it down a little bit. And I can see that's going to be the isometric, kind of like that. Um, but what if I went this way? I was thinking I might like that view, too. And I kind of think I might like that better. So if that might be my front, my top, my right my ISO, you know, it's a little bit of personal preference. This block is going to upstage the one behind it. So it could be completely hiding it. So maybe this is better. I don't know. Is that going to upstage? Yeah, we'll stick with that. That's not bad. So that's my, that's going to be my top. That's going to be my front. That's going to be my right. I just like to understand that. So there you go. That's, you get to see, sometimes I go and play around in there and use that to kind of consider the other views before doing my projecting, trying to decide if I'm going to rotate. So show the shaded D for dimensions on my keyboard. There's my overall width. And then um, the contours don't show up as much here, so I might even just do like this. And then how about I can even do this. And if I put those width dimensions attached to the top instead of the front, maybe I'll do the overall there too. Let's put them all together. Okay. This one right here, I know I didn't do three, you know, two of the three littles. I kind of did this. Um, this is like um, just another way. This, this 1.5 locates this block for me. And it also lets me know this here is... 0.75 at the same time. So, um, I mean, I could do the 0.75 there as well, either way. So that, if you're kind of wondering why I did that, um, sometimes just maybe to show variety, they're both equally correct. But there you go.
I have to hit escape if I want to kind of move and edit dimension. So I hit escape and D on my keyboard a lot. My left hand is on my keyboard, ready to press D or escape all the time. So those are my widths. So now I'm going to come down here for height. I think I like height better in the um, right view than the front view. And then depth I'm going to do here or here. So from, that's the front. This is the back. I'm choosing there because I know I'm going up with my dimension. I want the extension line gap. And then that depth, and there you go. Look at that. I don't have a single dimension on the front view. That almost feels like wrong, but it's not. That's okay. It looks good. Rename green multi-view. One to go. Oop, I'm too quick. Not inserting. I want to add a sheet, then insert. And red is the last piece. I want that L shape and I want the block that's on top of the L shape to be facing me, not behind the shape, so I can see it. Um, I like this face, but I don't like the rotation. So before I project, I'm going to view properties. I'm going to rotate 90 degrees. And it went the wrong way. All I do is hit this little reverse, opposite direction. That's the way I wanted it. I kind of like the protrusion sticking up and right if I have an L-shaped block. That leads me to putting my dimensions between views instead of outside. All right, so let's project to my top, to my right, and my isometric. Show the shaded. D for dimension, overall width. Smaller width. Overall height. One of the two sections of height. And lastly, I need depth from front to back. And I've got kind of a second section of depth. I got two sections, give one of the two. Put them on the contours. Notice I put them on the contours and not the other pieces. It's not because it's short, it's just because this sticks out and that doesn't. Last thing, right? Neaten up the spacing. I maybe need to go back and look at all of them a little bit for that regard, but I'm looking for um, some symmetry or some, some kind of uniformity, I should say, of, of distances and spacings kind of all around with all my dimensions. So, you know, just, you know, to appreciate the real time it takes me, I will take one last pass. The only other thing I might do is turn on hidden lines as well if there's a view that requires hidden lines. And if you don't know, then you can just right click and say show hidden lines and see if any dash lines appear. Um, um, I'm not going to take the time to do that if I know where I need them and where I don't. But this is the red multi view. So let's see, I'm at the 13 minute mark and I'm pretty much done. Um, I'm kind of liking everything. So there would be a hidden line here. There would be a hidden line in the top view. There is not a hidden line in the front. Spacing looks decent. No hidden lines here. Spacing looks pretty good. Uh, hidden lines. There's going to be a hidden line here on the right side. You know, behind that face, there's something that happens. No hidden lines from the top. I think the spacing looks pretty decent. I could move that a little up. I'm not trying to crowd the border, though. I like having some a good amount of white space. And I'd say I did great. Blue. Spacing's pretty decent. Um, maybe. I'm nitpicking, right? Maybe I'd want to pull that 1.75 a little further off, so give it a little space. But I'm trying to make sure everything's pretty reader friendly, not too crowded. Um, if I want, I try to like put those in the middle. Maybe I'll bring these out just a little bit. Oh, look at that! Perfectly aligned to that side. That looks nice. There you go. So I've now double checked all five, and I think they look wonderful. There you go. That is creating a five multi-view drawings putting the dimensions, turning on hidden lines where appropriate, and that is done in less than 15 minutes.